actually. Your host here, here on my uncle, Red Green. Big, big week up the lodge this week. Possum Lake is finally frozen right over. You know? <laughs> well, no, no, it doesn't really freeze, it congeals. But, <laughs> hey, whatever, Harold. The thing is, we can skate on it now, man. We love that. Get out there. Of course, the problem now is we got these yuppie cottagers up here. You know what they want to do on the lake? They want to go curling. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, oh no, Harold. curling's excellent. It's a great sport. Oh, yeah, you should try curling, Uncle Red. Yeah. Harold, when he sees me with a broom in my hand, it's all over, buddy. <laughs> so we got, the, we got the classic argument going on now, you know, because we want to be playing hockey and they want to be curling, you know? So it's kind of like the cattle ranchers against the sheep farmers. <laughs> well, don't let them pull the wool over your ice. <laughs> wool over your ice, I said to them. <laughs> right? Because it's like wool over your eyes, but it's different. <laughs> It's easy for you, you can change channels. <laughs> Here's a few scenes from this week's show. As you can see, we're going with kind of a winter theme from beginning to end, to get into all different types of sports. There's one type of sport right there. But don't worry, we're still going downhill fast. You know, Uncle Red, Uncle Red, I didn't think you had to be so rude to those curlers. Oh, Harold, they were asking for it. You know what they were wearing? Matching sweaters. I thought they looked sharp. Yeah, yeah, you think acne looks sharp. <laughs> anyway, Harold, I was more than fair. I offered them a fair compromise. <laughs> yeah, right. You said they could use the rink from midnight till dawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the ice is the best. How about the fact that it's pitch black and there's no light to You don't there? have to see the curl, Harold. All you need is a high boredom tolerance and matching sweaters. <laughs> We came up with a pretty good solution, I think. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. You know what their solution was? I'll tell you because you don't know. You know what it is? All the guys from Possum Lodge challenged the curlers to a hockey game, and whoever wins gets first dibs on the ice. Yeah, yeah. Oh. We're going to beat them so bad, they're going to have to fly home on their brooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, went up to the attic there, got out all my old hockey equipment. I used to play for the Possum Lake Industrial League. <laughs> Do not do that! This is disgusting! Do not! Harold, 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 it's not, no, Harold, Harold, Harold. We were sponsored by a brewery, that's all, okay. It sure came in handy when we had to flood the rink. I still think it's disgusting. What else oh. you got in there, like guns and knives and mace and, oh. and, and brass knuckles? Just my jock, I think. Horse with a horn is called a unicorn. Horse with stripes is called a zebra. A horse with wings is called Pegasus. And a horse with a broken leg is called Glue. It's time for the Possum Lodge Word Game! <laughs> this week, Mr. Dalton Humphrey of the Humphrey Everything Store is playing for the grand prize of this whistle. <laughs> whistle supplied by Murray's Outdoor Store. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering, he donated it. The thing's broke. Unless, of course, I just got some corn chips stuck in there for my retainer again. <laughs> but, you know, remember that? Happened? <laughs> Uncle Red, yeah. you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Dalton Humphrey to say this word. Compromise. Compromise. <laughs> and go! All right, Dalton, uh, mm -hmm. a happy medium. The, the amazing Kreskin. <laughs> oh, no, no, okay, no, no. When something is 50 50. 100. No, no, okay, okay. Let's say you and your wife have an argument. Normal. Yeah, okay, okay. But, but the two of you come to an agreement after a discussion, okay? There's been a. Miracle! No, 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 no. Okay, 
no, no, okay, okay, okay. You decide to do whatever she says, okay? Yeah. Because you... Misunderstood. No. <laughs> okay, okay. The secret to getting the two of you to get along right. eh, is to... Threaten to cut off bedroom favors for an entire year. <laughs> you know, she hates it when I threaten that. <laughs> We're almost out of time, Uncle Red. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. Don't, don't. You and your wife go into a furniture store, okay? She likes one couch, but you like another couch, okay? So you make a... Scene! No. <laughs> Spectacle! No. Huge production! No, 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 no. Oh, no. okay, no, okay, no. Let's, go, let's go another way. Let's go. You demand to buy your couch, okay? And your wife says, no, come on now, Dalton. You have to learn to... Sleep on your stupid couch. <laughs> I say, fine, and then she says, fine, and we get into an argument, and I point out how she's wrong, and then she points out how I'm wrong, and then we just get steamed, and finally we just buy both damn couches and put an end to it. You buy both couches? Well, you gotta compromise. There we go. Right here is the second best way to shovel snow. You've seen the deal. Something like this, and then... Oh! Gosh, I've lost my shovel. <laughs> but if you're married, like I am, you know that cheesy excuses only work once. So this week on Handyman Corner, we're gonna show you a better way to plow snow by making a snow plow. We're gonna actually use this door as our plow, because so far at the lodge, we're not using it as a door. <laughs> All right, you see, we have a bit of a problem. The door's kind of sitting low on the ground there, so we need something for it to slide on. Now, I could, uh, I could put a toboggan under there or maybe one of those flying saucers, but then I remember the handyman coat, huh? Put something you don't use to good use. So I'm going to use these uh, cross-country skis that Bernice gave me for my birthday after the checkup. A little bit too long, so what I would do is just uh, trim them down and just use the tips on those. That would probably work pretty good. Yeah, uh, if you don't have a pair of these, you can pick them up real cheap at a, at a garage sale every time a fat guy has one. <laughs> All right, that's got it. But you know me, I like to be doing two things at once. That way I can move slower. So if I can also be salt and sanding while I'm plowing, that'll really get the neighbors talking. So what you wanna do is get yourself a couple of salt shakers from your local restaurant, you're thinking to yourself, how the heck am I gonna get salt shakers from the restaurant? I'll tell you something. Deep pockets help. <laughs> oh, All right, take the salt shakers and attach them to your tires with the handyman's secret weapon. Now well, those units look pretty sharp, don't they? Of course, the key to any kind of a snow plow is you gotta have some weight in the back to make her work. So, well, I'm gonna throw a few yards of sand into the back of the van there. Not only will it give me the weight, the sand will sift down through the rust holes in the floor there and, and sand the road. <laughs> and rust the road. All right. Oh. You know, that floor doesn't, doesn't look too bad. I'm going to have to punch some holes in that myself. <laughs> Boy. Oh. Well, you might want to wear Ear protectors, if you... Can you hear me? You smell gas? Can you... Everybody hear me? Am I talking? Been, hello? Hello? Oh, jeez, my voice is gone. All right. Now, you want a way that uh, everybody's going to be able to see you coming. So I went down to one of them garage sales, got myself a couple of turntables here. And these go real fast if you set them on 78 RPM. At least that's what my grandfather told me. <laughs> so remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> I'm gonna take a second and talk to you older fellas about anger. Now, I don't mean your own anger because that, of course, is perfectly healthy and natural and really needs to be expressed. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you didn't express your anger, how would the rest of the world learn anything? <laughs> no, no. I'm talking about other people's anger. You know, now the first question that goes through your mind is, what can I do to please this person? The answer, of course, is nothing. <laughs> you know, you assume that because they're angry at you, they're angry at you. Other people aren't angry at you or what you do or how you do it. They're just angry. 
Now, you happen to be handy for them to be angry at. That's all. So don't take it personally. Let me explain it another way. My wife, Bernice, is always chilly, always got the extra sweater on. Now, just because she's chilly doesn't mean she's chilly at me. She's just chilly. <laughs> so some people are just tall. Some people are just happy. Some people are just angry. <laughs> and the best way to deal with anger is the possum way. Roll over and play dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll tell you why. It's very hard to be angry at a dead thing. Just ask my wife. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Uh, I had a bit of a setback at our hockey practice today. <laughs> that's, that's the worst team uniform I've ever seen. <laughs> Well, yeah, we used to have the sponsor's logo on there, but they, they found it was hurting their business, so they ripped them all off. <laughs> Actually, you know, everybody's uniform looks like this. Oh! Matching sweaters! <laughs> don't, 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 don't. Well, like, I, like I say, we were at the practice there, and Buster Hadfield's in goal, and Moose Thompson comes just streaking down the left wing there, and he lets a slapper go, holy mackerel. It hits Buster about four inches above the five hole. <laughs> Whoa, right, the, right up, oh. where is that? <laughs> you know how Buster uh, has a false set of teeth? Well, now he has a false set of voice. <laughs> yeah. 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 Whoa, I got, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it hit like a high C? More like a high F, Harold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He said the whole word, you know. Uh, but the point is, uh, we're looking for a new goalie, and I'll tell you something, Harold, you are our unanimous choice right there. Yeah. Oh, me? Yeah, come on, Harold. No, no, oh, no. Come on, Harold. No. You can wear as much padding as you want. No. No, it won't be us shooting at you, Harold. It'll be the curlers. Yeah, but no. No, no, Harold, Harold, Harold. There'll be girls watching. Okay, all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. But you owe me big time. Yeah, okay. Get your corner. Let's go. Let's okay, go. let's go. Let's go. How, how, come, how come Buster wasn't wearing any padding, you know, between the pipes? <laughs> well, at no point in protecting a part of his anatomy he never uses, hey? Oh. I, guess, I guess that's why you don't wear a helmet, huh? <laughs> the expert portion of the show. That portion of the show, we're gonna examine those three little words and then find so hard to say. I don't know! Wow, oh, masterfully said that. Anyway, <laughs> joining my Uncle Red on this part of the show is his best friend, Mr. Mike Hammer. <laughs> Welcome, Mike. The letter goes as follows. Dear experts, I find it impossible to get my husband and two teenagers away from the television for supper. I'd be overjoyed if they could just skip one half hour of television so they could all sit down at the table, talk, and eat together like a real family. What should I do? Whatever happened to the lost art of conversation? Hmm. Well, I don't think any conversation that went on at my house could be considered art. <laughs> it's more like sport. <laughs> Contact sport. <laughs> Things get a little out of hand, did they? Oh, mean? yeah, no. yeah, a lot of hubbub. Yeah. You know, my, my uncle would be hiding under the couch, and somebody would be in the corner bleeding. And <laughs> My dad was always in a bad mood because he was being arrested. You know, <laughs> you know the usual stuff. Oh, yeah, well, you know, I think this particular viewer just wants to turn their TV off and have a simple dinner conversation. Well, no, Harold, you know, it may not be that simple, you know. This is a woman, she says she's got a husband, she's got a couple of teenagers. I'd say she's been married for quite a while now, you know. Well, not necessarily. My parents had their eighth anniversary when my youngest brother was 23. <laughs> you know, okay, but okay, but they've been living together for a while, and when, when people have been living together a long time, sometimes they don't have anything to say to each other. Or, or you do try to say something casually at dinner, and like the next thing you know, your sister's being subpoenaed. <laughs> I think that's the word for it. <laughs> okay, all right. You know, you know, and, and there's another there's another dangerous side to this, Harold. When people don't have anything to say to each other they end up criticizing each other. Yeah, yeah, and you don't want that no, at the sir. dinner no. table because these folks are packing cutlery, right? 
You got uh, somebody waving a steak knife around, and before you know it, you got an extra ear on the corn platter. <laughs> Well, here's my advice to that lady. Just turn the TV off. Because there's no program as good as time spent with your family. Except for America's uh, uh, Most Wanted. <laughs> That's the same as spending time with my family. <laughs> Here's something the young people do. It's called snowboarding. We're gonna try it. Doesn't seem like too much fun to me. I don't know, thanks, Bill. Don't, don't need the ice right now. So the idea is you go down on uh, Bill the board. I think are you supposed to be somehow attached to that unit before? I don't know. I mean, I, I've never done it. But does this is this right? Does this seem right to you? Doesn't seem right to me. What? Oh, oh, okay. All right. Got two more boards. All right, Bill, I think I understand the theory. I'm not doing this again, are we? Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, that's how you do it. Oh, I see, so I, I'll need two more. You know, it looks awkward to me. Is that all right? Is that all right, Bill, is that? Yeah, I guess, I guess that's the right way. Watch out for the van, Bill. Oh, no, you got it. Look out for the trailer hitch ball there. <laughs> Fence. Oh, you got it, there, stop it. And then, oh. Oh, you don't even need a snowboard. Just use a four by eight sheet of plywood. Just like Bill, good one side. Oh, she dug in, she dug in. She's going over, Bill, she's going over. <laughs> no, I'll help, I'll help, okay, I'll help him. Yeah, I'll help him. Oh, look, still got a pulse. Let's get that board off from there. He's probably here. Bill, are you okay? Bill, Bill, Bill. Great. I hope his face is at this end. You coming? Yeah, I'll be right there. All right. Well, the big hockey game to find out whether Possum Lake is for curling or for hockey takes place in about an hour. The rest of the guys are already up there having a couple of bracers for warmth. <laughs> Sometimes they get so warm they can hardly move. <laughs> oh, boy. Bubble wrap? You know it! <laughs> if you get injured, where would you like to be shipped? <laughs> I don't plan on getting no, injured. No, no, I think you're gonna be okay here. Looks like you got the major items. Okay. Oh, the fry pan's a nice touch there, eh? How do you want them? Sunny side up? <laughs> anyway, but scrambles, okay, boy? <laughs> you know, Harold, just a little word of advice. You might want to flip that face mask down, you know, once the hockey game gets started. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Boy, if there was ever anything screaming for a slap shot, that's gonna be it. Come on, Harold. This is the repair shop part of the show we call, if it ain't broke, you're not trying. We've got uh, water taxi captain Hap Shaughnessy here. <laughs> How you doing, Hap? What do you got there for us today? I got a fireplace grate here, Red. Oh, boy, there's been some weight on there. You may be not drying your firewood out enough there, <laughs> Well, it's solid steel, and look at it. Yeah. They don't make steel like they used to. No, but you know, the beauty here is you just put a little heat on that, and we can bend that right back. What happened, anyway? Your sister fall into the fireplace again? <laughs> no, no, no. A burglar stepped on it. Wow, that's got to be some fat burger, I'll tell you. Yeah, no kidding. Broke into my house over the holidays. Yeah. Must have slid down the chimney. Uh, kids today, eh? Can't throw the rock through the window or anything. Got to go their own way on it, eh? Did they take anything? Yeah, nothing. No. Just ate some cookies and milk. Yeah. And left us some packages. Okay, okay, so you're saying like somebody came down your chimney during the holidays, ate some cookies and some milk, and left you some presents? Yeah. Was he wearing red with the white trim on it there, Hap? Didn't see him, right? Oh, all right, all right. The wife and I had settled in for a long winter's nap. <laughs> I heard a clatter arise, yeah. but I didn't get up to look. I suppose I should have opened the window and thrown Throw up the, the sash. sash. Yeah, all right, all right. All right. Okay, all right, so, so, okay, so you're saying Santa came to your house over the holidays. 
Santa? Yeah, Santa, yeah. Never thought of that. Oh, man. <laughs> but you could be right. Ah, if people found out Santa is real and he came to my house, I bet people would probably pay to see that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Red, Red, I, forget about straightening that. I need that bent just the way it is. That's my proof. All right, you tell the story exactly the way you told me. That'll be my proof. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, that has to be the low point. Getting beat at our national game by a bunch of curlers. 37 nothing. Nice goaltending, Harold. I make some stops. Yeah, well, that was one out of your mouth. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. But, Harold, you let in 37 goals. How does that happen? Well, they were curling them at me. No, sweep, sweep. <laughs> That's scary when yeah. they do that. I got nervous. Okay. Would it help if I had a little offense, you know? <laughs> Boy, maybe just if you got one goal. Even if you got one shot on goal, yeah. would have been. Well, but Harold, they made the rink the same size as they do for curling. You know we can't skate that far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting time, Uncle Red. Yeah. You go ahead, Gump. I'll be down in a minute. Okay. <laughs> My wife is watching. I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. I, I hope you're in a romantic mood. I've already suffered one shot out today. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and uh, Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Okay, all right. One little mommy, one this morning. Sit down. Okay, we just got one quick announcement. Uh, there's going to be a meeting of uh, men against malls, ma'am, as they like to be known as, and they're going to be filing agreements against uh, bachelors against marriage, or bam, as they like to be known. So, sounds to me like it's going to be slam, bam, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.